all the wonderful uh, people in this room today, you know, I want by saying how humbling an experience it is to be standing in front of all of you today, especially the youth generation that is so ready to take the reins of the future into their hands. Students, teachers, friends, and colleagues, good morning to you all here, and welcome to the TDU Altrubin High School Lecture, Africa's Plastic Revolution, Advancing Global Solutions for Healthy Oceans. My name is Prateep Nayak, and I am thrilled to be serving as the MC for today's event. Allow me to start by acknowledging the land that we stand on today and many of us work on day-to-day -day life. The University of Waterloo acknowledges that much of our work takes place on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldimand Tract, the land granted to the six nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Our active work towards reconciliation takes place across our campuses through research, learning, teaching, and community building, and is coordinated within the Office of Indigenous Relations. We will leave the values of our university, the University of Waterloo, and champion curiosity, courage, encouragement, engagement, relationships, and belonging. Paying particular attention to environmental sustainability, interdisciplinarity, indigeneity, the Faculty of Environment and the University of Waterloo have a unique and important role to play in working towards truth and reconciliation through research, learning, teaching, and community building. I will start now introducing our esteemed speaker for today's lecture. The TD Walter Bean Professorship in Environment was founded by the late Walter Bean and since 1994 has promoted hands-on learning with a focus on youth, community, education, and the environment. Today, it is the ready commitment further aligns our mutual goal of building a more inclusive and sustainable future through partnerships, and we are proud to count TD as one of our most important corporate partners and philanthropic supporters. Every year, millions of tons of plastics, which were quite evident through the questions that Miriam was asking you and good answers, thank you. Millions of tons of plastic find their way into our oceans, posing a grave threat to the thriving ecosystems in our oceans and the livelihoods of coastal communities who depend on the oceans for shelter, income, food, and their very existence. The all ramming train calls for urgent action to protect our marine ecosystems and ensure sustainable development for future generations. Now, please help me in providing a warm welcome to our 2023 TD Walter Bean Professor, Dr. Dennis Ahito. Dennis, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Ahito isn't just a name in the world of coastal resilience and marine conservation. He is a beacon of inspiration and a powerhouse of knowledge. As a distinguished professor of coastal ecology and interdisciplinary oceans studies, Dennis wears many hats including that of the founding director of the Center for Coastal Management, the Africa Center of Excellence in Coastal Resilience, shortly known as ESCOR, at the University of Cape Coast in Ghana. Dennis's academic journey is an impressive, as impressive as it is diverse, and you will see glimpses of that during his talk. 
with a PhD and MSc in Environmental Science and Tropical Aquatic Eco Ecology from the University of Bremen in Germany and an MSc in Rural Development from the Swedish Ag Agricultural University. His expertise spans over 15 years of scientific project management, overseeing institutional donor-funded projects in marine, coastal, and fisheries management at the University of Cape Coast, backed by partners like the World Bank and the USAID. And I particularly want to recognize, in the context of today's lecture, his numerous interactions and the great work that he does with youth, especially school students, not only in Africa, but also around the world, with specific focus in Ghana. What sets Dennis apart is not just his academic accolades, but his unwavering commitment to research impact and partnerships globally. His work delves into crucial areas such as marine ecosystem conservation, small-scale fisheries, marine spatial planning, wetlands ecology, and marine conflict issues. And again, you will see a lot of examples of these things in his talk. His insights are not just confined to academia. He also serves as a technical advisor to the West Africa Coastal Areas Management Program uh, of the World Bank, and a role that he has earned him that has earned him, I'm sorry, several uh, meritorious awards for his invaluable contributions. Um, Dennis Ahito isn't just a colleague, he's a great friend and a collaborator to many other faculty and of environment, certainly mine, you know, for a, a longer period of time, and a true force of nature in the world of coastal resilience and marine conservations. Students, teachers, friends and colleagues. Here I present Professor Dennis Ahito. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right, so good morning to you all. Good morning. Right. I expect this to be quite interactive, OK? Yeah, so I welcome all of you to this morning's uh, presentation. And I'm going to be talking about Africa's uh, plastic revolution. And um, I believe you all know when we talk about revolution, what that means. What, can someone tell me what revolution means? OK, I see hands this way. Yes? Can you be a bit louder? Breaking out of habits, I think, um, of old habits, old rules, and coming out with a new society. OK. That is excellent. You have one from me. OK. Let's give me a hand of applause. OK. So now, let's, let's also hear from a lady. Can I see by hands? Yes? Can you be louder? Something new and up and coming that I haven't been done before? Something new and up and coming. Not so precise. Not so precise. But you've done well. I mean, it's a step, but not so precise. Can we take a hand from this place? Or the top? Is there a hand up there? Yes? Sorry? A change run by the people. Yeah. Um, I want a, a lady, a, a woman. Yes. Sorry. Excellent. New ideas and innovation, you know, based on current trends. You know, so that is excellent uh, answer. Who can assist? Send this. You, you can just send that. Thank you very much. Yeah, so. <laughs> right. So these are very good ideas. So we're going to talk about the revolution, plastic revolution in Africa. So basically, is my, is my philosophy of the fact that 
the plastic problem is, is really an issue in Africa. Um, in terms of importation, production, consumption, and use. And that is in itself a very big problem. To the extent that it's af affecting our aquatic habitats, eventually ending into our, in, in our marine environment. So I'll be talking about some of the issues uh, surrounding the impact of plastics, uh, some of which you know already, but you may in this talk, in this lecture, learn some other impacts plastics are actually causing uh, in our waters. Impacts on biodiversity, impacts on livelihoods, and impacts on the entire socioeconomic systems. And I'm also advancing some global solutions, uh, some of which you may also know already. But I also want to elicit your thoughts in terms of what you perceive as some of the, or could be some of the issues that we can advance together on a global front. Are we all together? Are we all together on this? Yeah. Very good. So I will be proposing some five different areas that uh, um, I think that we should be looking at moving forward. However, I would like to really hear from you what your perspectives are, because you are going to be the next generation, right? I see presidents, I see um, uh, managers, environmental managers, I see uh, ministers of state, policy makers, regulators, sitting in this room. So the solutions that you propose could be what the world will have to listen to, right? Um, what I'm going to discuss with you are by no means the ultimate solutions, but there are some suggestions that I think when we look at globally, you know, be it Africa, be it Europe, um, North America, Asia, could uh, help us. Now, I do have some few questions here. Uh, why should we care about our oceans? Um, why should we care about oceans? I believe you all have your thoughts. These are what I think, but what are also some of your thoughts? I do not want you to repeat what you see on the screen. Otherwise, you will not earn a reward. Um, okay, the lady to the left, yes? The kids can have what? Kids can have an effect? The kids can have an effect on the ocean, in which ways? And in which ways would the kids have an effect? Yes, you are making a point. Uh, not so precise. Okay, so the lady by the side. so that the coral reefs don't get destroyed. What are the benefits of coral reefs? Excellent, they provide habitats for different marine species. That is excellent. Okay, congratulations on that. Yes? We can live in a clean and healthy environment. That is true. So which environment are you talking about? Our environment, to be specific, We're talking about the ocean. Is it the ocean environment? Do we live in the ocean? Clean water. Ah, you've, it's a good attempt, but it's not quite. Yes? Do you hear, if you keep talking, you will not hear what your friends are saying. Yes? Yes, so? Can we give him a round of applause? Uh, he says, we only have one planet. We only have one planet. And so if we, we trash the oceans, we basically run ourselves into peril. This is our next, I, I, I feel like giving you two, two of them, but it's okay. Uh, just take this, okay? Congratulations, you've done well. Okay, so let's take the last one from that lady there. Sorry? 
effect on biodiversity like what? Excellent. It's a good point, but what effect on biodiversity are you looking at? Are you thinking about? What is the impact that you're looking at? Can you give us a, a classical example? It affects animals that are eating, and what happens to the animals? When animals eat plastics, what happens to them? Effects on? Sorry, I can't hear that. Food chain. Food chain. Very good. And then ultimately, what happens to the animals? They get this thing, they die, right? So that is a good point. Excellent. Let's give a hand of applause. It's, it's an excellent. Uh, good. So there are many benefits of keeping our oceans healthy. You know, life on Earth, as has already been said, is very much dependent on the ocean. And life on Earth, we, life on Earth, we are not talking only about ourselves, but also about other animals, biodiversity, plants and animals. Okay. So then again, for recreational purposes, we want to swim. You know, we want to swim around, you know, we want to swim without having trash around us. Okay. Sorry. We want to be able to eat fish without plastic in it. Would you want to eat fish with plastic in it? No. Right. We want to also go to the beach and not worry that we will step on garbage, okay? We step on garbage or even feces. Would you be happy to find garbage on the beach? Would you be happy? No. no. We want animals to no longer be entangled in trash. So there are many reasons why we want to have a healthy ocean and some of the issues you have spoken about. As you all know, and as we learned in the Kahoot, the ocean covers 70% of the Earth's surface, right? You are aware of that, okay? And we are also mindful of the fact that 50% of the oxygen on Earth is generated by the ocean, 50%. So the oxygen that we breathe, okay, 50%. The oxygen that we have uh, in our atmosphere, in the environment that we breathe, 50% comes from the, uh, the ocean. What it also means is that Without the ocean, the, the continents, the peoples of the continents are going to have major challenges in, in breathing, okay? It's a free gift of life which the oceans provide. As a matter of fact, research, science has shown that without the ocean, there will hardly be even the rain. There will be no rains because the vegetation on the earth is not are not enough to be able to provide the needed um, water into the atmosphere to generate that, um, the kind of rain that we want. So the oceans are extremely uh, important. The ocean is also home to nearly 95% of all life. And here we are not talking about humans, we are talking about other forms of life, biodiversity, you know, um, plants and animal species, 95%. So it's very, very important that we take care of our oceans. And so given the, the issues that we've just raised, the fact that it covers 71% or 70% of our earth surface, you know, it provides habitats for 95% um, of life on earth and many other benefits that we're talking about, talking about the issue of oxygen, 50% of oxygen and all that. The question then remains or comes to my mind, why, why are we calling, why don't we call the planet ocean? Have you ever thought about that? Why are we calling it Earth? Yes? We live on the Earth and not in the ocean. We live on the Earth and not in the ocean, but how much, did you hear what he said? Because we live on Earth, we don't live on the ocean, and that is why we call um, it, earth. But would you argue for us considering calling, calling it ocean? Yes? Yeah. 
Yeah, but then the Earth, I mean, the planet itself is not also entirely Earth. Yes? Sorry? <laughs> well, that's smart. That's smart. Yeah, so, that's the, so we can argue about that, right? But if we're looking in terms of the beneficial services, okay? Yes? The geometrical perspective. Yeah. So these are philosophical issues we would want to explore. But if you look at the, the benefits, ecological services, social services, okay, uh, that it provides, would you want to consider uh, calling it, or we proposing that we, we begin calling our planet ocean? Yes? You want to say something? Okay, you can come in later. Right. Yes? Yeah, so this, these are issues we'll be coming back to, okay? We'll definitely get, get there. Yes? So you, you are arguing for the fact that it should be called ocean, right? There's lots of lakes, even on land, you know, there are other water bodies. You know, we have the estuaries, we have the streams, we have the lakes. In Canada, you have the Great Lakes. Yeah, yeah so I think we can begin talking about, there will be time for us to in, interact with this further. But this is debatable, but I think that um, perhaps if we are called it oceans, we would have paid more attention to protecting life and biodiversity. Yeah, so, um, so the planet Earth, historically, you know, there are five oceans. We have the Atlantic Ocean, and then you see these oceans actually come in between the continents. So you have the African continent, okay? And then you also do have the Pacific Oceans, but all these oceans are not separate bodies of water, okay? They are not separate bodies of water. They are interconnected. And then you also do have the Indian Oceans, okay, which also suggests strongly that the, the water from the Indian Oceans, uh, you know, move in a continuous mass, also joining up with the other uh, oceans. These are from Google Earth images. Of course, you also have the Arctic Ocean, and then also the Southern Ocean, the Antarctic, okay? So the question is why we call it Earth when most of the planet uh, is covered by water. These are issues that we can begin uh, thinking about. Um, the issue of plastics, uh, plastics are very versatile, important. Uh, it supports our daily life activities, you know, in packaging materials, in packaging food, in the textiles, the clothing that we wear, you know, in pharmaceutical industry is very useful. Also, um, in many other industrial applications, we find the use of plastics. As a matter of fact, plastics, uh, it's been proven that plastics that are used to, pre I mean, wrap around vegetables and food could um, prolong the lifetime of this food materials and vegetables about three times. So it's, it's very useful in terms of its applications in our daily lives, okay? Um, uh, however, uh, plastics, when it gets into the marine environment, could provide several inimical uh, challenges. So you can see that um, from this uh, data that I'm showing you, um, most of these, when we talk about marine litter, these are persistent um, materials that uh, we use, eventually getting into the ocean. And there are ocean, there are sources uh, that these materials do come from, from the homes, from industry, um, from also shipping activities. So we're looking at on land and on sea sources of uh, pollution. However, it's been found that plastics, you know, dominate all the marine litter, all the litter sources, okay? It comes in the form of plastic bags, plastic bottles, you know, uh, and sometimes food uh, containers and the cutlery, you know, that um, we, we find. Um, 
However, it's important to note that I'm, I'm mid or among all the marine uh, litter uh, that are bound, 60% of them are, are plastics. And it's important to know that at least when you go to the beaches, 80% of what we find on the beaches, uh, that we find on the beaches alone, uh, are about 80%. So it's quite an important component of marine litter, which we need to uh, certainly be looking at. You had a question earlier when you did the Kahoot as, um, game. This data provides or gives us an overview of the top 10 countries that dump most plastics into the ocean, okay? And when you look at this data, you see that the countries that contribute most to dumping plastics in the ocean uh, from where? Which part of the continents do you find that? You see, one the name of the continent. Yeah, the light up there is not helping me to see. Right. Right, so which continent? You want to see the extent of your knowledge in geography? Okay, yes. So which continent? Yes. Asia, excellent, excellent. So you have one from me. Okay, so she said Asia, right? Okay, good, excellent. So from Asia, you see that you have India, China, Indonesia, okay? And then uh, how many African countries do you see in there? How many African countries do you see among the top 10? Uh, someone has shouted the answer. <laughs> no, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not awarding that answer. You should raise your hand, I need to call you. So which country? Which country? Please allow me to call you, okay? Allow me to call you. Otherwise, there will be no reward for the answer. So it's Egypt, right? So Egypt is the only country among the top 10, you know, countries globally. But all, all in all, you, we find that nearly 320 million kilograms, okay, of plastics are thrown into the oceans, you know, by all these countries. What this also suggests is that um, Africa, even though it's experiencing increasing quantities of plastics in its waters or, or um, on its beaches, the continent does not by itself, you know, contribute significantly to the problems of the ocean. Do you, do you agree with me? Very good. So, you, you see that share of global plastic introduced into the ocean is 7.99%, most of it 81% coming from Asia. Of course, you see North America, of which Canada is also part of it, also dumps nearly 5%, okay? Uh, near, nearly 5% into the, into the ocean. But what do you think could be the reasons why um, countries such as Asia and now Africa coming up could be the reasons. I want three good reasons. Three good reasons why you think Asia is topping the list in terms of the share global plastic waste introduced into the country. Um, I want to call people who have not answered anything. Mariam, help me. Yeah. Yes. The person above. The person above. The yes. Yes. Uh, industrialization. industrialization, but Europe and North America is also industrialized. Could that be a very good reason? Is Canada not industrialized? Is Canada not industrialized? It is, but then the introduction of plastics is quite low. Any other? Over there? Over there? Yes, sorry?
What is that? Oh, fast fashion. Fast fashion. Well, yes, I think that's a good one. Fast fashion. That's a good one. Uh, do you have? Yes, please give. Fast fashion. Good. Any other reason? I'm expecting to find or hear a major reason. Yes? Population, let's give him a round of applause. So population, excellent. So Asia alone, according to the growth statistics, shows that growth statistics across the world, world population statistics shows that Asia alone constitutes 60% of the global population, 60%. Percent. And so that is that not significant? And it's still growing. And so uh, it's, it's really one of the biggest issues. What is the third reason why you think Asia is topping the list? Yes? Someone mentioned that already. Fast textiles, right? Uh, well, fast what? What's the word? Fashion, yes. Um, Mariam, can you assist me because I. Back there. So many. Lots of things sh that are shipped, you know, from Asia to and fro, okay? I think uh, we take that. And then the last one, I said three, but the answers are so good. So, so let's. So the last one, why do you think Asia? Up there. Yes. Up there, go ahead. You are saying maybe? I cannot hear what you're saying. Can you be louder, please? Well, it's, it's an attempt, but not a very good uh, answer, I must say. <laughs> yeah. Um, to say it's cultural, I, I think it's, I mean, people would normally would not dump waste, okay? Yes? Right? Up? Cheap production of plastic goods. Right. So production, yeah, cost of production is, is low, and so, so I think we should reward that. Okay, so very good. Right, so, so that, these are very good reasons. These are very good reasons. But now, coming to Africa, okay, we have seen that regardless of the fact that the situation is not as close to what we have in Asia, there is a growing trend, okay? There is a growing trend in terms of um, plastic production, plastic importation, okay? Plastic use and in various ways, okay? There is a growing trend. To the extent that is, it has been projected that by 2030, plastic production in some of the countries could reach as much as um, 2 million uh, metric tons, which is a very serious problem, especially for a continent that is not so much into um, waste um, management, okay? So much into waste management in the form of recycling, you know, and so most of this waste eventually ends up in the water bodies, you know, through the streams, through the um, estuaries that eventually get into the ocean. So it's really a problematic issue. So by this chart, I just want to show you the ranking of African countries based on amount of plastic imports and consumption. And there again, you see that Egypt tops. Uh, this was a publication in 2019, you know, um, that has highlighted the fact that nearly, you know, 2 million, um, 20 million metric tons of plastics are being uh, produced in these countries. So again, you see Egypt, you see Egypt, you see Nigeria, you see South Africa, and so on and so forth. And there again, 
the arguments we advanced for the issue of population growth in Asia, consumption patterns, you know, low cost of production of some of these goods also mirrors what we are seeing in Africa, okay? So in Egypt, Nigeria, these are more very strong middle income uh, uh, countries in, uh, in the, on the continent. So these are some of the issues um, pertaining to plastics. Now, given the argument that the ocean are interconnect, interconnected, there is the, uh, the, the, the chances that plastics that are dumped in the ocean anywhere in the world could eventually get to wherever, depending on the extent of movements of the currents, okay, what is called the ocean gears. There are five of them, North Atlantic gears, North Pacific gears, South Pacific, South Atlantic, and Indian. And so, um, depending on the movements of these gears, you know, these are under ocean currents, you know, that we find in these places, the plastics could move, and you may be in Canada, but you have plastics moving all around from other places, and you find them on your doorsteps, okay? So, on the basis of this, it becomes extremely important for us to have a global approach, okay? We need to have a global approach. The problems of plastics cannot just be a country-specific approach. We need to look at a global approach in terms of research, in terms of policy development, in terms of awareness creation, in terms of technology development, and in terms of partnerships. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? So the five things that I've mentioned are things that we need to work on in, in order to. So I'm going to show you some scenes in terms of some of the situations that we find on the continent of Africa in terms of how we visualize or we have seen uh, some of these. And of course, some pictures have also been taken from the western part, southern part of Africa, and of course the western, uh, well, but most of the pictures are from Africa. So these are scenes on the beach. Would you want to visit a beach like this? Would you? Okay. So. Who can tell me what this picture is depicting? Look at it carefully. Yes, okay. Uh, watch it carefully, watch this picture carefully. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Your chance is exhausted. Okay, let's pick someone else. Maryam? Okay, okay. Watch the picture carefully. Yes? Very good, very good. Can we give a round of applause? You know? Yes, thank you very much. So you see that fishes brought out a hall of catch and they find plastic. So you see fish and plastics. You see fish and plastics. So this has become one of the common features on beaches, on fish landing sites, and fishing communities where fishes are catching fish and plastics, or catching plastics instead of fish. And what do you think are some of the economic or social impacts of some of these practices? Three of them. Three. Okay? Yeah. What could be some of the socioeconomic or environmental impacts? Higher cost of fishing? Can you explain that further? Can you explain that further? Very good. Yeah. Can, let, let, please give it. 
So less money for the fishermen, because they've invested quite a lot of money going fishing, buying of fuel, crew, paying for crew, and then they come up with the plastics instead of fish. So less money, less income, increasing poverty. So what does that tell us in terms of the SDGs? In terms of SDGs, you know the SDGs? SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. SDG 1 and 2 has to do with what? Who can tell us the SDG 1 and 2? What are they? Yes? Poverty. Reducing poverty and what? Poverty and? Hunger. Very good. Let's give them a round of, go learn about the 17 SDGs. So if fishes, if fishes are catching plastics instead of fish, going to, we're going to see situations where poverty is going to be increased, enhancing coastal communities, there's going to be hunger. You know, we are not going to achieve SDG 14 in terms of promoting life be, below water and things like that because biodiversity has also been affected and the linkages are there. So they're catching more plastics, which is a problem. It's been estimated that for every, listen carefully, for every 10 kilograms, for every 10 kilograms of fish that is hauled, between 1.5 to 2 kilograms of plastics are found within that. And um, many studies, including um, other development agencies such as the USAID, have projected that by 2050, fishermen will be catching more plastics than fish. Is that not scary? Is that not scary? By 2050, fishers will be catching more plastics than fish. So what should we begin to do at this particular moment? As young people, what do you think you should be doing now let's look at yourselves. What contributions can you make in terms of supporting a global agenda to reduce plastics? Yeah, um, Mariam? Stop throwing trash. Stop throwing trash in the ocean. Do you throw trash in the ocean? <laughs> you are in Canada, do you throw trash in the ocean? No, it's a good point, but I'm asking you, do you throw trash in the ocean? You don't. You don't, okay. Sorry? We, we should not use plastic products, where? In homes. Can, can, we, can we, oh well, it's, it's good. But let me find out, can we really stop using plastics? She's saying that we should stop using plastics at home. It's a good point, right? But I'm asking whether we can ever stop using plastics. Can we ever, so what other pragmatic, yes? Please help me because I'm not able to. Right. Um, up there. Up there, yes? Yes, go ahead. Reuse, reuse is very good. Yes, I think it's a good point. I think you need, I need to give. It's got, it's got it, good. So when we have plastic products, we have to reuse them or what else? Yes. We reuse them. Reusable materials, excellent. That's 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 good point. Okay. Yes. Let's get one or two more. Yes. Yes. By doing what? You mean charging more money? Right. Mm -hmm. 
wow, I see this lady to become a policy maker. She's really, I think we should, <laughs> yeah, that, that's good. I like, I like the connections you were trying to, you, yeah, so, so that is good. So I think we should, we should make progress. So these are some beaches, you know, and in the end, you know, plastics, you know, what do you think this animal, um, what is it? It's a seal, very good. What do you see around the, the seal? So the issue is that the plastics, once it gets into um, the ocean, you know, uh, if the animals do not eat them up, they get entangled, right? So I will be showing you some disturbing scenes. Are you ready for them? Are you ready? Okay. So you see that uh, this is, has been entangled with nets, lost and abandoned, okay? Net, fishing nets. Are you happy to see this? Are you happy to see these kinds of? Hmm? How do you feel? You feel depressed? Yeah. It's sad. So you think this animal is going to eat for some days? Hmm? What, what, what do you observe? That's a marine turtle, right? So what do you observe? What do you observe? What significant thing do you observe on this turtle? Um, pick. Yes? I can't hear you. The plastic did not bend the shell. What, happened? what really happened? Okay. Mm-hmm. Very good. Excellent. So it was caught at a younger age, and as it grew, it got it's affected. The, the, the shells are quite hard. Have you ever seen a turtle? Extremely hard. You know. Look at that. So what do you think is the effect? Can it fly? No. It can't fly. It can't fly, you know. I see some of you are almost crying. Look at this. So these are very disturbing scenes, right? Sorry? Yes? You want to ask, yeah, go ahead. You want to ask a question? I'm just showing you these images. Okay, these are some of the effects on biodiversity. What is this? Yes? Is what? What? Plankton. Yeah? Hmm? So, it's been found out, I found out in litter base, okay? There's a database called the litter base that show that about 4,000 species of albatross, okay? Okay? Have been affected by marine litter. For this particular one, all these plastic materials were taken out of the animal. By a through a surgical uh, operation. Without that, do you think it would have survived? No. It would not have survived, yeah. So there are significant direct and environmental impacts, okay? The, the fish or other biodiverse wildlife ingest, they get entangled, and there are some significant ecosystem effects as well. What do you think are some of the ecosystem marine effects? Mm hmm yeah? Yes. Mm 
Very good. That links to what we call the food chain impact, okay? Did you hear what he said? If the animal, can, can you say that louder? Very good. Yeah, so what he's saying is that if an animal dies out of eating plastics, the other animals that depend or live on those other animals by eating them would also die. So it has significant effects on biodiversity, okay? On the food chain, on the food web. Yes? Unfortunately, damage habitats. In which ways? Right. Excellent. 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 So, so these are, there are significant direct and indirect impacts. Okay. And of course, also introducing invasive species that sit on them. Um, there are economic impacts on tourism. Tourists would not want to go to a beach like this. Would you want to visit a beach like that? You want to go to a, a very clean, white beach where you can have all the fun that you want to have. Okay. Fishing and even navigation. To what extent do you think um, plastics can affect navigation? I think you, you had something up there. Up there. Yeah. Right? Yes? Navigation. Uh, to what extent do you think plastic can affect navigation? Yes. Go ahead. They stop the boats from moving by stopping what the propellers. Very good. And what else? What else? Well, that's a good point. So yes, correct. Yes. It does what? I can't hear louder. Yes, yes, that's a very good point, extremely good point. And then let's take the last one on this. How do you think it can affect the blue economy, navigation, and others? Yes? It does what? Okay, I think it's, I, I cannot hear the word. Oh, trade, okay, trade routes. Trade, obstructing trade routes, yes. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, within the context of the, have you heard of the concept of the blue economy? Have you heard of the blue economy? Ocean economy. Apart from tourism, what else do we derive from the oceans? Blue economy is all about the investments around the ocean resources. So there's tourism, there is what? Tourism, shipping, what else? Oil and gas industry, offshore oil and gas production. What else constitute the blue economy? Ocean economy, yes? Petrochemical industry, I already said that. What other investments do we benefit from the ocean economy or blue economy, yes? Someone said hydroelectricity, yes, wind energy, hydro, okay. What else? Seaweed production or aquaculture, right? Or marine culture, we call it. So growing of plants and anim animals, not just fish. So with plastics, to what extent do you think plastics will affect the blue economy in terms of wind or marine culture? Can someone share ideas with us? Oh, OK. Let me see to people in front of me. OK, this, please, gentlemen. Oh. He said? Louder. Which, which economy are you looking at? Yes. So you are talking about the fishing industry. But I want to hear other kinds of industry within the blue economy. We've already spoken a lot about fish. What other economies are associated with the ocean? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, take that. So, sorry, yeah. Regeneration. 
Regeneration of what? We're looking at industries or okay. economies. Okay. Yeah? Hydro? Yeah, so um, production of electricity and all that, okay? If there is garbage or plastics, then it's going to be a problem. So these are, there are but there are also human effects, okay? Some of these plastics, once they break down into small particles, they become what we call microplastics when the diameter is below five millimeters, okay? Below five millimeters, they break down. When they get into the water, due to waves, current, temperature changes, they break down to what we call microplastics. When they're above um, five millimeters, they are called macroplastics. Now, microplastics, you don't see them, you know, so they travel in the water. That is also one very significant effect of plastics. When they become microplastics, they can travel from Africa and come to Europe, North America, they travel and they are in the water. Okay, you don't see them with your visible eyes. That has become even more problematic. Okay, effect of microplastics. So when you leave here, go and read more about microplastics. Microplastics are becoming um, a health threat, even though science has not been able to tell us the effect of ultimate effect of plastics on our life, but you can see what is happening already happening to the animals, okay? So some of these plastics are also made up of chemicals that eventually leach or get into the marine environment and they are toxic to our human life and so on. So there are significant problems. So on this slide, I wish to encourage as many, many of you to consider careers in marine pollution, okay? Because the problems are many. Plastics is just one of the, uh, plastic pollution is just one of the many forms of pollution we have in our marine environment. What other forms of pollution do you think comes to mind? Apart from plastics, what other forms of pollution? Gentlemen. Oil, Oil pollution, excellent. Marian, help me with. Oil pollution, what other forms of pollution? Yes? Yes. Yeah, that, that overpopulation is a driver. But what form of pollution are you thinking about? Is that also a driver? Yes. Up there. Air pollution. Air pollution eventually, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, all get into the oceans, bring about ocean acidification, right? Okay, so that is correct. Other forms of pollution? <laughs> okay. <coughs> Scrub metals and so on and so forth. We can go on and on. Okay, so we need marine. We need marine biologists, okay? Would you want to study the effects of some of these pol polu pollutants, okay? Plastics on marine animals. Would you want to study that? Yes. Excellent. We need oceanographers who can travel on boats and track some of these marine debris. It's extremely important. You have a hand up? You want to be a marine biologist? Uh, or what do you want to say? Another, another, okay, so tell us. Uh, mass disposal of pesticides. Mass disposal of pesticides. It's a significant, and where are the pesticides coming from? Where are the pesticides coming from? Uh, from factories, from agricultural fields, and so on. Okay, so we also need chemists, learning how chemicals from marine debris can affect the environment. Okay, we need educators. We need many careers around this. So, you go to work very hard, you go to college, go to school, go to college and graduate and work in these professions, okay? We also need marine lawyers who will help us with the regulations and many more, okay? Um, and it's 
work on, working on these topics is really a lot of fun because we've got to protect our planet, okay? So I do have some questions for you. And I still have some of these gifts around. And of course, I want you to leave this lecture with these three uh, different topics here. Uh, which items and C's that you saw in this lecture really surprised you? Yes? Well, you didn't know that 50% of the oxygen we breathe was produced. So without the ocean, we'll be gasping for, for oxygen, right? Okay. So that surprised you. That's fine. Okay. And then, what are that? Which items and scenes surprised you? The ocean currents. So what about that? The flow that the ocean currents have that link them. Okay, the links between the ocean currents that you never you didn't know that they are connected and then eventually they move around. The ocean moves around the earth, right? What else? Are you please give him one? Yeah, there you are. Good. What else? Yeah. I think you should pick Say again. All the plastics are In the best tummy. So what about that? What's, what is, you surprised about that, right? So you surprised that they, so they see it as food and ingest it. Yeah, good? Excellent. Yes? No, you already, no, I think we take. <laughs> Marian, yes. I think you should assist. Which scenes surprised you? Genuine surprise. It's not because you want a reward. Okay? The fishermen catching a lot of plastics instead of fish. Excellent. You are surprised. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, which thing surprised you? Yeah, there's a hand here. She's saying something. You are surprised that? Loud. The effect on the economy. In which way? On fish farmers. <laughs> okay, well, we've, we've heard that already. Okay. We've heard that already. Mm -hmm. Yes? So, after her, we come up there, okay? You said? You were surprised about the amount of plastics found where? Oh, in the, in the bed, albatross, okay. All right, so why should we care? Why should we care about all that? Why should, do, do we have to care? Do we have to care? It's a general question, do we have to care? We should, right? Okay, so why? Why do we have to care? Or why do you have to care? Because? Because of the lights, I'm unable to. So why should we care? Yeah. He says that plastics in the ocean makes the fish poisonous. It's a good point. It's a very good point. We want to eat fish, right? You can imagine eating poison, poison on your plate. It's deadly, isn't it? It's a very good point. 
Because the plastics contain toxins, right? Okay. Okay. Why should we care? Why should we care? Yes, why should we care? So then wait. Right, everything on the planet works together. So if something does not work, I mean, it's a good, it's a good. Uh, yeah, let's go to the next one. Now the last one. What can you do as a student to prevent plastic pollution in the oceans? What can you do? What can you do? This question, I want to hear your personal perspectives, OK? Yes. Changing your diet, does it mean we eat plastics? Fast foods, okay, okay. A lot of candy, fast food. This guy really wants this thing, yeah. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah, he's so determined, he's been. Okay, so two more. Two more, then we go to Q and A, okay? Right? Stop using plastics and use what? Reusable stuff. Good. And then the last one. I leave that for Mariam to last quest, last person. It's been said already, you reusable items. So, so the lady behind, yes. Sorry. I, we can't hear you. Say again. Oh, okay. So we should support companies that are producing reusable and biodegradable. Uh, yeah. So that is providing them some incentives, maybe tax incentives and all that. So that is good. So on that note, do you think that plastic pollution is preventable? Do you agree? Do we agree? But it can only happen, that can only happen when we adopt, we take some revolutionary steps, right? Revolutionary responses, building the knowledge, what I call knowledge revolution, training people, building relevant competencies, training more scientists, okay? And then we also doing advocacy, awareness creation, advocacy revolution. We also engage in technology revolution, okay? Producing reusable uh, materials. We also engage in what? What last thing would you propose? Yeah, well, so well done. So on that note, I want to thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. There's
Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. You deserve one. Well, he's having his water. <laughs> that is wonderful. Thank you. Can I get your attention, please? So thank you. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Professor Ahito. Another round of yeah. I mean, what you just did, you know, you probably started a plastic revolution in Canada in Waterloo through your talk and engaging with uh, this wonderful, you know, students uh, here. So thank you for that engaging talk. I mean, I would not say it's a talk, you know, so you are a great advocate and motivator and mentor, uh, and you have brought your messages to Waterloo and engaging with these uh, students in a great, great way here. Um, we're going to just go straight into the questions uh, and answers, you know, because I had a 10-page questions for Dennis, which I would not do, but we'll go into questions, and we'll take a few only in the interest of time. And Mariam will help us, you know, take questions. Yes, uh, ask your questions precisely <coughs> and explain it so that you get a good answer. And loudly. Okay. And loudly. Yeah. Pollution wise, do, do I have to answer immediately or you take a couple of them? You want to take a couple well, of them? Pollution wise, okay. Two well, more questions then. Yeah. What inspired me? Yes. Okay, so, so I start from the last one. Uh, I've not come across such projections yet, but this is where we need some of you young ones also to assisting us to begin looking at the data, okay? Data on plastics in the ocean are not very comprehensive, particularly for the continent of Africa. There isn't so much information, so much data available in terms of the quantities, quantities or biomass or quantum of plastics in the ocean. So we need a lot of data collection, but that also means that we need correct protocols that are developed to allow for the um, measurements of the quantities of plastics, okay? It also means that uh, because it is a, a global problem or a regional problem, the ways and manner in which we collect data on plastics must be harmonized. Do you agree with me? It must be the same, so that we can compare data across countries. Because if West Africa is collecting data in a certain way, and North America is collecting data in another way, I mean, comparing the data will be very difficult. Do you agree with me? So we need to have standard protocols for collection of plastics and then measuring them, yeah. okay? The second has to do, the, se the second question was asking what motivated me to go into this field. Um, well, I studied biology, you know, I studied biology, I wanted to go to the medical school. Unfortunately, I couldn't make up the grades. I'm just being frank with you. And I found myself in a biology class, which I really did not like from the beginning. But as time went on, I realized that this was really what I should have been thinking about, you know? And um, I, I think that 
eventually, I, I see myself making much more impact on this topic, far more than if I would have gone to read medicine. You know, I'm not by any means suggesting that going to medical school is not bad, but I think I find myself in a far more rewarding profession because the impact of my work through the research and contribution to um, helping to establish a center in Ghana, which has become a center of excellence for Africa, addressing issues of plastic pollution, for me, is more of a lifetime achievement. And so um, I would say that as a young person, it was really not my intent. I didn't really know about this. And that is why we need to speak to a lot more young people, especially on the continent of Africa, to tell them that they are equally very good professions, okay? In environmental sciences, in the marine sciences, and not just uh, professions in medicine, engineering. Because some of these topics, once you work on ocean topics, you're already an international person. Because the oceans are interconnected, you know, you, you get invited to places to really address this issue, you know, from a multidisciplinary perspective. The first question asked about what do we foresee for Canada in the next 10 years? Uh, I foresee Canada to be doing much more, um, better in terms of technology development, uh, in the ways that looks at alternatives for plastic use, you know, plastics products, uh, providing more opportunities for reusable um, materials instead of the plastics that are being produced, and providing more uh, research funding, you know, and, and supporting more training uh, of young people like you, providing scholarships and fellowships to allow young people to study these topics. And I'm happy that the University of Waterloo Faculty of Environment is doing this very well, of course, not just because the foremost um, academic department in Canada, environment academic faculty in Canada, but also there are equally very good universities, not just in Canada, but across the world. We'd like to see some of you come in to also study in Africa, doing some of these researches on the continent to help have a better world, okay? Right. Three more. Right, good question, good, good question. question. Okay, so let me take this two first. Yeah, yeah. So, no, let me take this yeah, okay. two first. We'll come back. So, so the, the first question was asking about, the first question was asking about what would be my first step in tackling the, revolution, the revolutionary nature of plastics. My first step would be to target the youth, to target the youth especially on the continent of Africa where we've seen a lot more young people, you know, the growth rates is very high in Africa, with many young people on the continent. And of course, um, you guys also need to contribute to the subject, doing a lot more, getting involved in the awareness creation and education on plastics, okay? So that would be my first step, involving the youth in policy advocacy, in knowledge, building, you know, in, in building partnerships across the world to, to make the change that we need. Because we need that intergenerational equity in terms of knowledge transfer, in terms of information sharing and advocacy. So my target would be the, one, uh, the youth. The second question was asking about where would I want, would I advise to target first, whether the consumers or the producers of plastics? Um, well, it's just like the egg and chicken, which one comes first? I should voice it out. I think we should target a lot more of the consumers first. That would be my suggestion. 
Because once there's no, um, uh, how do I put that? Once there's no market for plastics, because people are using alternatives, the, the, naturally what happens? The industries will begin to think in ways and manner that allows them to look at other alternative uses. Don't you think so? Because for the companies, they, they, they are market driven, they are income driven, they want the money. So once there's always a market for it, they will keep on producing. But once you produce and there's no market for it. So I would target the consumers, do a lot more advocacy, changing the behavior and consumption patterns of people, particularly in the West and in Asia, uh, to begin looking at it differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take one more. What's the most effective ways? I think the effective ways, um, I don't think there's one way, but I, I think we should be looking at effective ways. First, looking at technology, development. We also need to do advocacy when it comes to consumption and production. You know, We also need to look at putting in place the needed laws and regulations. You know, why do we need laws? We need laws in order to let people conform to the rules and to be able to put in place punitive measures and prosecute offenders when it gets, and, and there are many other ways that I think. So these are the three key ways, putting the needed laws in place, technology, and advocating for change. These are the three key uh, areas that I will advocate for. Okay, so we'll take three more questions. Please be very, very precise and speak Loudly. <laughs> no, he has asked me. Sorry? I didn't hear that. Plastic. Yes, are they specific? No, I mean, there are many of them. It would be difficult to point out to individual companies that do this. They are extreme. In fact, in every country, you have industries that, that do this. But most of these industries are in the Western countries, in the US, in, and obviously in China, Asia, India, Indonesia. And so there are, no, there are many, just as you find many other industries in various places. important state for <coughs> okay no. so what is the most important step for students in helping I thought you would rather tell me um, but most important step for students is to learn a lot more about because as students you are expected to learn you are expected to study and you, in my last slide I emphasize on that you got to work hard you know, and get the knowledge about plastics and the environmental, ecological, social impact. Because it's only knowledge on these issues that can help policy reforms. You cannot be advocating as youth when you do not have the facts, okay? You need to have the facts. With the support of your teachers, you also need to read and read from the right sources and not from just anywhere on social media. So as students, I think the first step is to make sure that uh, you get the right and needed knowledge that can help you to address the problems. Do you agree with me? There's no other way. If you do not have the facts, 
of the issues. You cannot advocate, you cannot argue for your, uh, make a, a case against the use of plastics. So now, I'm going to point to the key students, and I want you to really think about what you've learned, and in your own words, give a respectful thank you to Dr. Hedo. Go ahead. Yeah. So you can just say thank you in, in, in words that, on what you've learned. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you too. Yep. Stand up and speak up. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too. All right. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So can we give a round of applause to Dr. Hito, please? So now we're going to all stay seated. I believe there's going to be another Kahoot coming up that's going to be locked. Uh, I'd like to also thank the organizers. So I don't know where Chimike, Suki, Tulu, and the rest of the team are. So can we give a round of applause for the people who work very hard to get this on? And last but not least, to your teachers who actually went out of their way to apply. Not everybody gets to come here. We actually turn classes down, just so you know. So please thank your teachers with a loud round of applause and gratitude. All right. Hello, people. Um, I will release the two of you if you <laughs> feel like hopping off of the stage right now. Um, thank you both so much. That was excellent. Great job. OK. Is it a duck or a goose? It is a goose. It is a Canadian goose. OK. All right, folks, so we're moving into the next section of our evening. We don't have, or morning, we don't have time for another Kahoot. I wish we did. Um, if you want an opportunity to win a goose, you can ask nice questions, insightful questions to the professor, and maybe he'll think about giving you one, okay? 
All right, so we're going to move on to the next set of things. We're going to get you guys to go out in groups. Um, teachers, if you are in this space, we do ask that you make sure that your students are with you. Um, we'll be calling you guys out in groups and we'll have our team pointing you in the right direction. Um, Eastwood and Resurrection, some folks are over here. Yes, correct. I believe that there's a team that's going to take you where you need to go for your next section. So I'm going to ask Eastwood and Resurrection on this side to stand up and head out with those lovely volunteers. Okay. <laughs> 